Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And as this video airs, there are just nine days left in the contention season for World Arena, which means there's only nine days left to lock in that amazing Lionheart Sermi skin we just took a look at. She's my personal favorite character in Epic 7, and if you're watching this, odds are she's one of your favorites as well. The thing is, most of E7's player base doesn't even really play World Arena, and from what I've seen on social media, they're looking for some guidance and pretty lost on how to kind of make it to master's rank and secure their skin that's okay though this video is going to be a cheat sheet talking about what i think the best units are for standard or a turn two play style in this season so that, that way you could get that master's rating and lock in your sermia skin it's not an aggro or cleave playlist by the way because i'm not super amazing at playing those play styles so if you're somebody who likes to play epic 7 very aggressively very fast might I suggest hitting up my homie Valky on his channel and see what advice he has to offer you. This, again, is for standard and or turn two. There are four tiers in this cheat sheet, and we're going to go over them really quickly. The first one is broken. I think these are the absolute best units in the game right now to base your strategies around at lower levels until you hit that master rating. After that is solid, which are average units that are usable in a good chunk of scenarios. Then we have niche, which are a bit harder to use every game, but do have some very specific and strong uses. And then finally, we have counter pick only. These are characters I think you should only choose in the exact scenario that I'm going to describe when I talk about that character. The rest of the video is simply going to be me just talking about each character, along with three characters that I think complement them well and you should draft alongside them, as well as three characters that I think they're terrible against that you should avoid picking them into. I'll also give you an example stat line and build for them so that, that way if you don't know what the hell to actually you know play them on that gives you something to work with and finally i'll also talk about where they're most commonly picked in draft order so that, that way you have a general idea of should i pick them first early in the draft should i use my ban protection on them later in the draft so on and so forth a couple more reminders before we get into it to get the skin this is super important you must be at least masters rating and play at least one game after August 21st, 2024, so that, that way you do not decay and fall out of Masters. I have seen people lose their skin because they think they have Masters secured, and they do not play at least one game in the last 72 hours of the season. Also, you may notice that there is a specific lack of certain characters that are on this list that you might think should be on this list. This is a list for standard players using the most effective tactic available, aka meta, right? Just because a character doesn't appear here doesn't mean that they are unusable. It just means for a standard or turn two playstyle, I think that they are either inconsistent, like Lionheart Sermia, for example. She is a notable absence from this list because I think, unless you're a specialist, she's going to do more harm than good or be more often not a dud pick. But then you have characters like Eternal Wanderer Ludwig, who absolutely should be in the broken tier and is pretty much the bedrock of Cleave right now. But again, this is not a Cleave tier list, so that's why he is excluded. Finally, let's talk about win rate because I know people really stress about what their win rate is. They see the number, they see it's low, they get stressed out, they tilt, and they actually just give up on trying to get the skin. Don't let that be you. Big Smo proved years ago that he was able to at least touch legend rating with a sub 10% win rate. Don't worry about your win rate. Don't tilt. Just grind games and get your skin. Lastly, Use the timestamps down below because this is obviously going to be a very long video to figure out which character you want to learn more about. And if you enjoyed the video, as always, leaving a like or subscribe helps me out here a ton and helps me continue to do more videos like this one. All right, got it. Good. Let's get into it. Closer to solid than broken, Abyssal Euphenia is a powerful hyper carry that restricts enemy combat radius gain. She also has pseudo immunity to some control compositions thanks to her passive. At lower levels of play, I found players don't really know how to punish Euphine properly, making her an excellent choice to build your strategy around to try to get Masters this season. She's incredibly weak to seal, counterattack units, and resource restriction. Ambitious Tywin is the best knight in the game in the moment, in my opinion. His passive protects your team from debuffs, he can hold a slew of great artifacts to protect his team, and his skill 1 is a provoke that drains souls. His skill 3 flash is one of the best skills in the game, in my opinion. It ignores effect resistance as long as he's enraged and is an AoE stun and defense break. Nearly any playstyle benefits from having Ambitious Tywin on their team. He's weak to effects that give team-wide immunity, he's weak to seal, and he's also weak to tank busters. 
Blood Moon Haste is the best anchor in the game at the moment. His passive forces you to focus him down, otherwise he gets Blood Aura, which means that his S3 Moonslash can kill almost any character in the game in one hit. And a kill from Moonslash guarantees a revive to his entire team. He has amazing damage as well as team-wide healing and is the tankiest Soul Weaver in the game, making him stupidly difficult to kill. He is very weak to injury as well as seal and unbuffable. Selene is a hero that starts in stealth and punishes non-attack skills incredibly hard. She holds most of the best skills in Epic 7 hostage, otherwise she gets to unload big damage thanks to her soul burn, which is capable of killing 95 plus percent of the cast in one hit. A must have for nearly all playstyles in this format. Her preferred exclusive equipment is going to be the stun one, otherwise she can be baited pretty easily and punished with a character like Janua. She's weak to teams with strong AoE or red damage dealers. Death Dealer Ray is a must play or must ban unit in this format. You will lose a lot of games if you do not have a plan to fight him, especially since he's selectable for free from the Fallen Land selector, meaning a lot of newer players will have access to him. His full strip and AoE sleep is game deciding in many cases. Even without his skill three, he provides his entire team with injury, which when coupled with the sleep on his skill one, allows him to easily dismantle entire teams with ease. He has very few weaknesses outside of the ones that are listed on your screen. Despite not commonly holding Aureus, Dragonbride Senya is in my opinion the best hero in the game if you want to protect a specific ally. If the enemy focuses the hero in the back slot, Senya will get a massive damage boost to her skill 3, which can easily kill squishy teams and put a huge dent into other ones. This allows you to buy time for characters like Abyssal Euphine, Navy Captain Landy, or other carry of your choice to win the game. It also creates nearly unwinnable scenarios for the opponent if you put Blood Moon Haste or Icarina in the back. She's incredibly weak to injury, seal, and tank busters. Janua is another must play or must ban unit in this format. He is the single target hyper carry of the format. Whenever he goes under 50% HP, it'll activate his passive, which cleanses all debuffs from him, and he becomes enraged. While enraged, his basic attack skill is supercharged to a level that can kill almost every single character in the game in a single hit. The fact that he has immortality for one turn, like Kairon, also makes him frustratingly difficult to deal with. He's very weak to seal, sometimes weak to unbuffable, and stun. That last one is super important, by the way, as he cannot activate his passive and gain enraged while he is stunned. Laia is perhaps the universally best character right now for standard in my opinion, and is the one that I personally base my RTA drafts around. Laia does literally everything. She is tanky, fast, has a full team-wide cleanse, and can solo an entire game all by herself. Having Laia also denies your opponent from taking some of the most overpowered characters in the game like Lua, Nequal, and New Moon Luna, as they have very little effect against her. She is only really weak to injury and tank busters. Despite the fact that you only get one to two bans, Nakual is yet another must ban or must play character in this meta. She can strip buffs, reset cooldowns, and deny counter attacks. The fact that she has seal and silence on top of all of that is borderline insane. She is one of the bigger design mistakes in Epic 7 history in my opinion. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to be crazy fast on this character, as I've seen ones hover in the 230 to 250 speed range in Emperor. You really only need Guiding Light and to recognize when your opponent can't actually deal with her. She has very few weaknesses besides the ones that are listed on your screen, or just being outsped. Navy Captain Landy, or as I like to call her, Landy Uzumaki, is just a really strong hyper damage carry DPS. She's got that anime main character privilege, aka plot armor. Just put her on counter set, slap on Elbow's Ritual Sword, and pray she counters and activates her salvo. Win game. Easy peasy. She's stupidly brain dead and lets you randomly win games that you have no business taking. Perhaps the most easy mode damage dealer to play in the entire format. Weak to guaranteed critical strikes as well as bind. New Moon Luna is yet another <laughs> must play, must ban hero. Are you noticing a pattern with characters in this tier? She has an AoE strip and team seal, which allows her to do whatever she wants without any fear unless you bring a cleanser. Skill effect nullifier on her means that only Lua can shut her down on turn one. Her skill two also gives her value in bursting down your team, making her super flexible in how she approaches matchups. 
pairing her with other must cleanse threats like death dealer ray or skills that punish non-attack skill cleanses such as green selene can put opponents in very backbreaking no win scenarios she's only really weak to cleansers and even then not really realistically you have to kill her and her entire team before she kills you it's luna of course she was going to be broken Peyra is the go-to character of choice I feel in this format for slow players to put all of their fastest speed gear on. Her naturally high base speed means that she realistically has a chance of outspeeding some opers you come across outside of Zeo and Ran. She has unbuffable to counter many top characters like Blood Moon Haste, while also providing escort to your team, meaning that she can be your main tank if you need her to be it. She also has stun and attack buff, and that's just extra icing on this wolf's cape. She's weak to barrier inversion, extra turn punishes, and AoE buff strips. Ran is normally a cleave opener, but even for standard, he does have some use cases. He's the fastest character in the game to give two turn immunity, meaning he can block a fast, ambitious Tywin stun, for example. Pairing him with Blood Moon Haste or Dragon Bride Senya gives you a very fast damage dealer that can strip and defense break and wreak havoc on the entire enemy team if left unchecked. Obviously, though, they will get punished if they do try to check him due to Senya or Haste's passive skills. A really strong surprise last pick in some cases. He's weak to counterattacks or if you somehow outspeed him. Oh look! See Phantom Politus is yet another must play must ban hero. Another character that is indicative of why the format is miserable and people don't like the state of things. Regardless, Politus is pretty much a tempo goddess. She strips the enemy team, massively speeds up your team, and massively slows down the enemy team. All of this while being very fast, permanently stealth, and doubling as your main damage dealer. Her granting and rage also enables Genua and Ambitious Time at the start of the match, which just lets you run over your opponent and get easy wins. She also single-handedly pushes down Ocean Breeze Lulica and Lone Crescent Bologna a whole entire tier, while making Lionheart Sermia not even a real character anymore. She's weak to non-attack skill punishes, or a Soul Weaver with Soul Constellation, at least the ones that aren't Ocean Breeze Lulica. Zeo basically guarantees you turn 1, which lets you either dictate the terms of the match or speed contest one of their fast units and lock them down. That by itself inherently gives him value and is why he is commonly banned or contested by fast players. They literally can't deal with him and that inherently makes him valuable to you even if you are slow. For players that are not comfortable with aggression, I recommend a bruiser build which gives you the DPS to rush down the enemy team if you need it. Moving on to the solid tier, our first entry is Angel of Light Angelica. She is one of the queens of debuffing and disruption, which is what this entire format seems to favor. She strips enemy buffs, silences their best units, and profits for your team. Her passive is also amazing versus cleave or other control mirrors potentially. She doesn't really need to be crazy fast either, and her good stat line lends her to being super tanky on an artifact like Proof of Valor or Spirit's Breath and just allowing you to debuff forever. She's pretty much just weak against cleansers. Next is Arbiter Vildred, and I want to clarify that he's only really good if you have his exclusive equipment. Getting 50% dodge and a damage amp after revive allows him to kind of have a chance to survive the double kill scenarios that used to be good against him, and also gives him the damage to run over entire enemy teams pretty easily. If your opponent is drafting a team that has no defensive capabilities and is pretty squishy, Arbiter Vildred is an incredibly strong pick and can instantly kill them on the crackback. He's very weak to Seal, Extinction, and Anti-Revive passives. Bellion is commonly banned in the matches that you want her in, but if she is available, she's a pretty amazing character to put underneath of your ban protection. She denies the opponent from having souls, which is pretty much the lifeblood of a lot of the degenerate teams in the current meta. If you see characters like New Moon Luna, Ran, or Eternal Wanderer Ludwig, and this character is available, she's an amazing choice. Her build path is also very flexible. You can build her as a tank with Arius on protection set, counter set DPS on Elbow's Ritual Sword of 3F, or even as a very fast debuffer. She's weak to injury, debuffs, and counter attacks. Briar Witch Asari is one of the best characters for stripping opponents buffs and defense breaking their team to set up a win. It's ideal for you to have her be 10 speed faster than whatever DPS you want to set her up with. So for example, if you're trying to use a 220 speed Sylvan Sage Vivian to AoE kill a team, then you're going to want your Briar Witch to be 230 speed. Her other use is Denying Revives, which can be Solid versus Blood Moon Haste or Arbiter Vildred, but it doesn't always work out. She's weak to Unbuffable, but also some very oddly specific counterpicks. Ah yes, Conquer Alilius. See, Phantom Paul has basically stole her thunder, and she has a lot more counterpicks now than she used to, 
but she's still pretty solid as a speed contest and she provides a lot of value to your team with vigor, barriers, and extra damage. I wouldn't first pick her, but she's a great choice in the third to fifth pick slots if you need a speedy disruptor that can also perform other jobs. She's weak versus extra turn punishes, non-attack skill punishes, and dual attack punishes. Crimson Armin is the best budget tank for slow players. Simply build her on protection set with Arius, make her slow as dirt, and build her bulk sky high. Putting her in ban protection alongside of Laia on her team, while incredibly boring, is an incredibly consistent way for you to climb the ladder and one of the best ones that I recommend for players who just want to get the Sermia skin and get out. She's weak versus unbuffable, defense breaks, and tank busters. Dragon King Sharoon is a rock solid support who hard counters two of the most broken characters in the format. You can play Sharoon fast as an anti setup character who defense breaks Soul Weavers and Knights to get a foothold in the match, or you can build her a bit slower on an artifact like Celestine and have her grind out your opponents with stuns and heals. Sharoon is never a super bad pick in any matchup where the opponent has an abundance of Knights and Soul Weavers, I've found. She's weak versus getting hard focused down and sometimes counter attacks. Lua is perhaps the strongest character in this tier because she completely denies your opponent's team's tempo. She's not the fastest character and loses really hard to Laia, just like Nequal, but unlike Nequal, I feel Lua isn't quite as good at slower speeds, making her a bit harder to use. Still, if you have Laia, Lua underneath of your ban protection forces the opponent to speed up their draft or give you a free win, well, assuming they don't have Navy Captain Landy and get lucky. She's weak versus Laia or heroes that don't care about their cooldowns getting reset like Navy Captain Landy. Moon Bunny Dominiel is a character you pick anytime your opponent drafts a character with a mandatory extra turn in their kit, such as Conquer Lilius, Peyra, Death Dealer Ray, Nequal, etc. This is the character that you draft as it's the only one in those scenarios that will usually save your ass. If your opponent doesn't draft those things, the character is incredibly mediocre, so I'd probably choose a different support. The reason she isn't in counter pick only is because, well, the scenarios you draft her in arise quite often. Ocean Breeze Lulica is an all-around strong disruption Soul Weaver, assuming the opponent doesn't have resource reduction units like Sea Phantom Polidus. If your opponent has a non-attack skill opener, Ocean Breeze Lulica is a great way to undo their setup and get a foothold to get back into the game with her strip, blind, silence, and defense buff for your team. She also provides excellent turn cycling for your team with her skill 1. Robbie's a bit hard, I feel like, to build for newer players, requiring some specific gear on her to perform well, like, say, an HP percentage necklace that has high crit damage subs. She's pretty much one of the only reliable bruisers in this format, as she's not affected by the slew of injury that stops every other Hellscaler from existing. The fact that she always lands critical hit and has injury herself in the kit makes her great versus heroes like Laia or Navy Captain Landy. Her exclusive equipment is the extra skill 1 damage, in case you're wondering. Weak versus control, as well as other blue bruisers. Savior Auden is old reliable. Everyone has access to this character, and if you don't, well then why are you watching this video? Auden is basically the standard for a usable DPS in the format. She has good damage, provides good utility to the team with her team-wide invincibility. She's also really hard for newer players to deal with, as they may not have confidence in their speed on characters like, say, Shaltier Bloodfallen or Last Piece Corinne. You should have a game plan yourself when climbing to Masters versus Auden since again, everyone has access to this character, so even newer players will pick her up early and often because she's a solid, usable hard carry. She's weak versus anti-dodge units as well as seal. Sylvan Sage Vivian is a solid carry DPS that does good AoE damage. What puts her in this tier is that as long as she has full focus, she's immune to debuffs. This means that some of the compositions that rely on disruption, say the New Moon Luna ones or the Nequa ones, they can't really do anything to her. I found playing her on Lifesteal with Ancient Book for the Soul Burn allows her to sustain through long fights and quickly stack up her damage to hard carry a game. Vivian isn't the most exciting character, but she gets the job done. She's weak versus resource reduction and getting hard focus down. Urban Shadow Shu is a tanky, fast, consistent damage dealer that has a speed buff for your team. She's also the second best injury character in the game besides Death Dealer Ray. If your opponent is locking in tanks, Blood Moon Haste, or bruisers like Lyre or Lethe, you're gonna want to bring Urban Shadow Shu. She's weak versus resource reduction, as well as getting focused down. Albedo is a collab hero from the Overlord collab. She's the best mitigation knight in the game besides Carmen in this format. Aegis on Fold gives her great value versus Cleave, 
and Rage of Nazarek allows you to set up kills on key targets and also hard counters characters like Blood Moon Haste if you have enough effectiveness on her. She can hold Arius to be your tank or her own artifact 3F to be played as a bruiser. She's weak versus injury as well as tank busters. Ikarina is a collab hero from the Espa collab. She's an anti-aggro slash cleave bruiser. She creates some pretty frustrating scenarios with Blood Moon Haste as well as Dragon Bride Senya on her team allowing you to make no-win scenarios and do big damage with her skill 3 to the enemy team. She's weak versus debuffs, as well as some health scalers like Lion. Now we move on to niche characters. These ones are still pretty strong, but have very few use cases. First in this tier is Arya. Her gimmick is her skill 3 Umbral Hour, which stealths her entire team and gives her a counter-attack stance. From here, if the opponent's team is only single target attacks, they're going to be forced to take a slew of counter damage from Arya, who can quickly pick up the game from there. Be warned, Ari is one of the hardest characters in the game to build and use effectively. Bihu is a character who has the very valuable unbuffable debuff and can put up big damage without needing to critically strike, which is what gives him inherent value. That said, he's not exactly the easiest to use as he's not super fast or super tanky, making it hard to thread the needle with him without getting picked off or controlled. Destina is a reliable Soul Weaver that can cleanse debuffs from heroes like New Moon Luna and give you a second chance with a team revive. Her lack of speed and non-attack skill heavy nature are why she's hard to use consistently without getting punished. Last Rider Crow is a great candidate to hold Arius and tank for you if your opponent is loaded with AoE attacks. He's also got a decent matchup against Ambitious Tywin. Other than that though, his performance isn't exactly the greatest right now. Injury, Seal, and being free food for characters like Blood Moon Haste and Genua make him hard to recommend outside of the niche game here or there. Lethe's new exclusive equipment gives her a new lease on life now that she can set up kills versus characters like Landy without the fear of counterattack. She's dummy thick and if you can buy her time, she can easily dismantle teams by herself. The thing is that she's a bruiser which means she's naturally weak to injury and debuffs which if you look at the top tiers, that's a big chunk of the best ones. Little Queen Charlotte is an alternative to save your Auden to instantly kill dark units, but she's difficult to use properly. Slower builds need tanks and combat radius pushers to do well, while faster builds are susceptible to getting picked off and dying early. Lone Crescent Bologna is an anti-AoE DPS who has some great matchups in the format, particularly against Navy Captain Landy. She also has some really terrible matchups though against certain control units, namely Sea Phantom Paldus and Death Dealer Ray. Her peers, Euphine and Landy, don't really seem to suffer from those same matchups, which is why she is here and there where they are. Martial Artist Ken is a higher risk, higher reward version of Lone Crescent Bologna. He's not really affected by C Phantom Politis per se, but he's still very susceptible to control thanks to the sheer amount of ignore effect resistance in the format. He's also completely worthless versus damage dealers of the format that don't critically strike, which is a lot right now. Mediator Kawarik was basically replaced by Laia, relegating him to a backup cleanser role. Backup cleansers are actually still really important, as that way your opponent can't just ban out your first and only cleanser and run you over. He's also not really particularly good against some of the super top tiers like Death Dealer Ray or Nightwall. Remnant Violet just got a recent round of buffs, and they're nice, but more often than not, he's just going to be another version of Savior Auden. And Auden provides utility and is also pretty good as an anti-dark unit versus Blood Moon Haste, which is a character you're going to need specific answers to. Still, he's a pretty good DPS for you to pick up in the 4th or 5th pick slot if you're looking for a strong carry and your opponent appears to have no way to deal with dodge units. Solitary is a character you only really pick to check characters that have focus in this format. There's simply too many things that could kill her before she gets to her first turn, seal her passive, punish her AoE attacks, or hit her with unbuffable, leaving her as a sitting duck. Still, if your opponent doesn't have any cleansers other than, say, Ocean Breeze Lulica, and you see a lot of focus units, Solitary is a pretty reliable play. Specimen says is another variant of Remnant Violet or Savior Auden, but requires specific setups to do well with. If you could get the proper protection on his team, as well as get some stuns rolling, he could definitely be your hard carry. I recommend putting him in your ban protection slot and building your whole team around him if you really want to play him. Spectre Tenebria's value comes inherently from her permanent stealth, making her inaccessible to teams that don't have AoE attacks. If you notice the enemy team is entirely single target, a last pick Spectre Tenebria can easily allow you to run over the enemy team and secure a victory. Unbound Knight Arwell is the tank you choose if you need another stun on your team versus Genua or say for a setup character like Specimen says. 
Compared to other options, she doesn't mitigate as much damage, and since her ability to tank is determined by a buff, rather than say an artifact or a hard-coded passive, it's pretty susceptible to a lot of the ignore effect resistance strips in the format. Still, next to Crimson Armin, this is going to be your best budget tank. Counterpick only. These are characters I think you should only really pick in the specific matchup that I'm going to describe in each of their sections. First up is Apocalypse Ravi, who I think is only useful when your opponent's composition is a bunch of tanks and supports, and their only way to win the game is off of Laia. Just injure the Laia with her skill 1 and take away their only way to win the game. While at higher tiers of play, there's definitely a lot of build diversity for Biblis and a lot of cool scenarios you could pick her in. For this tier list, I decided to keep it really simple. You're only going to be using her against Martial Artist Ken and Navy Captain Landy because she punishes their counters very hard. Dark Corvus is a last pick only versus teams that are heavy AoE and don't have big burst damage. You don't want to be picking him into anything that has Injury, Seal, Silence, or Provoke. Designer Lilibet is your best budget option versus debuff heavy cleaves if you don't have Edward Elric. And ML5 being a budget option kind of sucks. Smilegate, please. Desert Jewel Basar is a counter pick versus Para and a solid backup cleanser. His base stats hold him back from being a bit higher on this tier list. Elena is a must-have Soul Weaver for all standard players to play against Cleave. Do not pick this character before pick 3 in the draft, as she's absolutely terrible versus Red Politis, and the earlier you pick her, the more likely you are to get countered. Elvira is a must-have Thief because she counters Abyssal Euphine and any other Fighting Spirit character that's not named Navy Captain Landy. Do not pick her if your team is already very low damage as they will most likely outlast you. Infinite Horizon Achates is an answer to New Moon Luna if you aren't going to be pre-banning her and you can't pick her. She's got bad base stats, so I can't really recommend using her outside of that Luna matchup. Politus is a reliable answer to her Moonlight 5-star counterpart, Sea Phantom Politus, and also a semi-reliable answer to Genua. To answer Genua, hit him hard enough to proc his passive, which will then trigger Politus's passive, which hopefully strips his immortality and lets you kill him before he gets to a single turn. Rowana's Vigilant Eye is the best overall passive in Epic 7. If the opponent has AoE extra attacks or AoE counters, this character is free real estate. Sage Ball and Zizan, like Zio, is a character that lets you contest fast players when you don't have speed gear. It's something that they must respect. Edward Elric is a collab hero from Full Metal Alchemist. He punishes cleaves and drafts where their only way to victory is to use a debuff that hits Edward. This in turn triggers his passive equivalent exchange and sends it back at them. Not great for general usage games in my opinion, but he does hold the injury set really well, which can give him some legs in certain matchups like say versus Lion. And that's going to do it for my cheat sheet for the contention season. Let other players know down in the comment section below if you find any other strategies to help out us slow players so that, that way we can all together get our Lionheart Sermia skin. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like or subscribe. Helps me out here a ton. Would really appreciate it. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.